Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am super excited to introduce our guest today. This is Alicia Wolf. Alicia is also known as the Dizzy Cook, which is just the coolest name ever. Hello, Alicia. How are you? Hi, Lindsay. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. So um, there is a reason Alicia is known as the Dizzy Cook, and I'm just going to go ahead into my first question and have her tell us why. So Alicia, um, I love this name for you. You're a chef with a very specific type of migraine. You have vestibular migraine. This means uh, you not only experience migraine symptoms like so many of us do, but you also experience something called vertigo, which isn't um, just dizziness like many of us would know it, but it's also like a very specific spinning sensation um, uh, that's not maybe even at the same time as your migraine. You might even get it when you don't have a migraine. So please tell us what it's like living with vestibular migraine. Yeah, um, so actually only 50% of people with vestibular migraine actually experience head pain. Mm -hmm. um, and I was one of those. It was very difficult for me to be diagnosed because I didn't often get head pain, if at all. Um, but I was having symptoms of vertigo, which is like spinning, like you said. It can also feel like you're moving when you're standing still. So. Sometimes I would be sitting in my car and I would feel like I was moving forward when I was actually in park, which was wow. terrifying. Right. Um, yeah, it's symptoms like derealization, depersonalization, where you feel detached from your body, or uh, they call it Alice in Wonderland syndrome, where objects seem to be distorted around you. You would have, sometimes I would have feelings of falling when I was just sitting in my chair so it just sounds so scary yes yes it's yeah. it's a terrifying experience along with your typical migraine symptoms of like light sensitivity or sound sensitivity uh so those are kind of more synonymous with vestibular migraine mm -hmm. how did you um how did you really quick tell us how did this appear in your life how did you find out you had it if you could quickly describe that to us. Sure, so uh, at the time I had just returned from a two week trip around Asia where we had taken a lot of flights and I ended up getting sick and I thought it was just a head cold, um, but my doctor had said, oh, you know, you're probably just tired and stressed. You, you know, here's some antibiotics and steroids. Hopefully that'll help you feel better. But I would just start to feel dizzy throughout the day, and it got worse over a period of time to the point where I was having those scary feelings when I was in my car, like I was moving and I wasn't. And I, I just said to myself, this is so much more than a head cold or stress. Like, I've been stressed before, but th this is totally different. So yeah. that's kind of when I started down my path of trying to find an ENT who had diagnosed me. And at first, they found a vestibular weakness in my left ear from my original testing. And they had kind of guessed it could be a number of vestibular disorders. Mm -hmm. um, so I started down the path of vestibular therapy, but I wasn't getting any better. In fact, I was getting worse. And it turned into an issue because at the time I was working full time for a watch design company and, and I didn't have a set diagnosis. So I was taking all of this time off right? and I was in, in jeopardy of losing my job. So uh, after seeing about six different doctors who all told me I just had anxiety or it could be early MS or I might need a surgery that would cause me to go deaf, I was like, okay, we're just going to go try to get an appointment at the Mayo and see if there's a doctor there that could help me. Mm -hmm. And so I went through all this testing at the Mayo. It was like two days of, of vestibular testing. 
And my doctor walks in and he goes, oh, you have migraine. And I said, Mm -hmm. no, I don't. I like don't have headaches. I'm dizzy all the time. Like, that's not what I have. He goes, it's a type of migraine called vestibular migraine. And uh, it's it's only been recognized in the last 10 years as a diagnosis. So there's there it's very new, Uh, not not to our community, but new as a diagnosis and being recognized within the medical community. Right. Uh, so he didn't actually find that vestibular weakness that they had found previously. So he wasn't sure if I just had faulty testing at the time or if I had a vestibular neuritis that healed and, and we'll really never know. Right. Um, but either way, this event kind of was what kicked off my vestibular migraine. And, right. and that was when I was 30 years old and I grew up, um, I, I, I would have headaches occasionally, but nothing like a migraine attack. So this was all very new to me. Right. Uh, so think, it's difficult to get yeah. diagnosed, I think, when you have this disorder because it mimics many other things. Yes, especially other obvious. vestibular disorders. Right. And it might not be obvious to you or your doctors at yeah. first that this is what you have. Um, and so you went through quite a bit to get your diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but it I felt was, so good once I did. And, right. and what was interesting was right about that time that I saw this Dr. The Mayo, because since he was an ENT, he couldn't prescribe all the uh, medications that neurologists can. So uh, he had me go to UT Southwestern, who is my neurologist, who I see now. Mm-hmm. And he's one of 10 doctors maybe that specialize in vestibular migraine. Mm -hmm. So we got on a good path with him and he agreed with the Mayo diagnosis. And I felt like so relieved to finally have an answer and to have something to work on as far as medications and everything like that. Okay. Um, Are there a couple things that you would like people to understand about living your life specifically with vestibular migraine? Yeah, I mean, I was judged a lot at work uh, for wearing, I had tinted glasses and everything, and you look totally normal from the outside. I'm sure a lot of people with any kind of migraine can relate to this. You look totally normal on the outside, but inside, I felt like I was rocking on a boat or walking on marshmallows or dropping. I mean, I was having these terrifying attacks and using cubicles at my office to guide myself to the bathroom. I don't think anyone at the time really understood how bad it was, Mm -hmm. um, including my HR department and everything like that. They just made it really difficult on me. Uh, And so I just wish other people knew what it was like to be fearful of walking or of driving or of going to the grocery store Mm -hmm. and not having your balance. Right. Okay. Um, So tell us what prompted you to look at your diet as one of the strategies to combat your illness. So when I first saw my neurologist, uh, it was about the time that I knew we were going to try to start having a family. Mm -hmm. And I knew I needed medication, but we tried to work on some medications that I could do that would be okay during pregnancy during pregnancy or that were a little easier to wean off of. And so I really tried to focus on as many natural treatments I could to support my healing process. So I was kind of grasping at anything I could do, whether it was oils, diet, acupuncture, just anything natural, I was throwing it at this migraine disorder. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I started looking into diet. Okay. And then you also, you happen to be a chef. So how long have you been a chef? (laughs) Actually, only since my migraine disorder. Uh, So I'm not classically trained or anything like that. I mean, I grew up loving to cook Mm -hmm. and I've kind of been self-taught. I mean, I was single for a very long time. So nothing made me happier than to treat myself to a really nice meal at home. Mm-hmm. And so I started learning from cookbooks like Ina Garten and, and Christina Tosi and these powerhouse women chefs that I really loved and just 
cooking that way and figuring out what ingredients worked well together. Um, so whenever I got sick and I was home and I had to leave my job, all I had time for was really cooking besides watching TV and uh, cooking gave me some motivation and allowed me to be creative when I couldn't do that with my career anymore. So that was kind of my hope throughout this diagnosis. Right. And it was sort of a blessing in disguise. I, yeah. I love your story uh, because you now have a cookbook uh, <laughs> that you have written um, can you, do you have it there? Can you show it to us? I do. It's okay. right here. It's called the Dizzy Cook. And this <laughs> is, uh, one of our, it's called a fajita bowl okay. and it's actually got a faux sour cream on it. So sometimes people with migraine can't have fermented items. So right. it's got faux sour cream on there. And, um, yeah, some fun different recipes like barbecue sauce. I have queso, mini meatloafs in here. So really something for everyone. So oh. tell us the premise behind these recipes. Um, they are really good for people with migraine disorders. Yes. Yeah, so I think whenever you go into some doctor's offices who, who support the a migraine diet or changing your diet to help with migraine, they typically give you a long list of things to eliminate and it can seem very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so with my website and my cookbook, my goal was to make it very approachable and fun for people. So you're changing your diet, but it's still recipes that your whole family can get behind, like the meatloaf, things that they're used to. Mm -hmm. uh, so the recipes, you know, I have some that are gluten-free, dairy-free, vegetarian, and vegan. So they're all labeled at the top. And then I can give you little uh, modifications for those as well. Uh, but overall, the book is about eating things without MSG. So I tell you how to read labels to avoid those kinds of things. Um, no MSG, no sulfites, no nitrates, um, eliminating those kind of things and eating very clean. Uh, so I give you tips on, on brands to look for and how to shop and also just how to cook basic recipes at home and make it fun. All right. Yeah. Um, so I believe we can reserve a copy of the Dizzy Cook. Uh, it's not quite available for us to have in our kitchens yet, but we can reserve a copy <laughs> yes. Is it on Amazon that we can do this. Yes, you can pre-order on Amazon. Okay. They're going to ship out February 18th. Okay. And uh, they're also on Barnes and Noble. They'll be in most bookstores. So you can just ask your local bookstore and they should have it. Um, and I also have signed copies on my website called the Dizzy Cook Shop .com. Okay. Yeah. And is that your main website page? Because you also, I love your website. You also have uh, great recipes on your website. You have your story. You talk about what vestibular migraine is. Um, it's actually very informative to teach people about vestibular migraine. So it, what is your main website page? Yeah, it's just the dizzycook.com. Okay. And uh, I am also have an Instagram and I have a Pinterest board at the Dizzy Cook uh, with lots of different recipes, whether you're a vegetarian or you want a chicken recipe that night. So they're all kind of grouped together and you can go and find those pretty easily as well. Okay. Um, yeah, but I also talk about kind of what I did to help my vestibular migraine and to get that really under control as well as my journey with it. So I think people with VM or who are questioning VM or how to get a diagnosis mm -hmm. uh, can go on there and find some really helpful tips. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask you to talk to us about is, to me, you are just a wonderful example of uh, someone who has really overcome their migraine disorder and um, is just doing great with it. And we all know that migraine can absolutely get the best of us. 
Yeah. We are all at different phases of this journey. Sometimes we're moving forward. Some of us, even when we move forward, we end up moving backward for a while. And I'm wondering if there's any advice that you can give to so many of the people out there that right now are, are struggling yeah. um, in their migraine journey and, and they're just hurting. And um, can you talk to them for a second? Yeah, I think it's interesting you say that that we're all in different areas because I think a lot of people see my site and see me now and they think that either I wasn't that bad or that I just got better really, really fast. And that wasn't the case at all for me. I mean, I'm going to, into my fourth year with vestibular migraine and I was 24 seven. I mean, I could hardly get up off the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, there were times that I was just throwing up all the time and I couldn't walk. I could barely open my eyes without feeling so, so sick. Yeah. And I know what it's like to be there. And I also know what it's like to start feeling better and get knocked backwards. And that's totally what happened to me as I tried to wean off different medications, especially birth control to try to have kids. Mm -hmm. um, and even now I'm going through IVF treatment. So I'm kind of learning to navigate my migraine disorder with pumping my body full of hormones, which has been interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so all I can really say is this is a journey and it's not something that heals overnight but you should never give up hope. And that was one thing my neurologist actually told me when I was feeling really discouraged. He, he said, I have patients that go into remission all the time and I rarely see them anymore, if at all. And you should not give up that hope because it's totally possible. And, and that's typically what he sees as far as his migraine patients, especially with those with VM. Mm -hmm. So all I can really say is keep going and keep yourself open to new treatments, mm -hmm. whether it's natural treatments, whether it's a new medication, just keeping yourself open and trying things. Not everything's going to work for you. And I think it's good to not get discouraged about that and just say, okay, you know, here's something new. And we have all these new medications that are coming out and available to us. Mm -hmm. um, I know my neurologist re just released a, a study on gamma core and how that's helped people with vestibular migraine. Mm -hmm. I know people have learned a lot from my journey with Tamil eye drops. Mm -hmm. So there's always these new things that, that we haven't tried out there that are just total possibilities for us. And I think keeping that positive attitude and just grinding it out and keep going is the best thing you can possibly do. Yes. I, I love that you said that. And, and I agree. Um, I used to be horrifyingly sick. It's very hard to explain that to people who see me now um, and never, 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 never give up. Um, yep. I, I think that that's a really good message. Um, so thank you so much for being on. I love your story. I can't wait to get your book. And I love your <laughs> website. Um, I am not one of those people who's a great chef. So uh, anytime <laughs> you can show me a great recipe like that, I'm all Yeah, in. we're going to so, get you there, Lindsay. Yeah, that does not come naturally to me. You'll <laughs> be like, the next Dizzy Cook. <laughs> I like to eat. I don't love to cook. So, so I love your website. So thank you for that. So thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. And please uh, tune in again next week on Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. And thank you so much, Alicia. Thank Bye. you. Bye.